My name's Nick, this is Walter, and welcome back to the shop. And if you're wondering what this contraption is, I'm really trying to figure out the audio to make this better for you guys. Uh, not entirely sure what I'm doing. Let me know if this is better or worse than other videos or if you've got any audio recommendations already. I'm normally a hobbyist woodworker, although I do make a commission piece on occasion and I've been getting a little bit more into making cutting boards just like I'm sure a lot of you have. Last year, my friends and family helped me build this 12 by 20 one car garage and it, now it's my shop. So this is gonna be a shop tour. Now I'll show you around each individual part, but first I wanted to show you the bigger picture and talk about shop layout. There's not room for infeed and outfeed in the back of my shop, so I decided to use it more for workbenches and tool storage. In the front of my shop are my bigger tools and open space that can be a little bit more flexible. And then I generally try to keep my big infeed and outfeed tools in the middle of my shop so I can run them without having any doors open. With that being said, let's start in the center of my workshop with the table saw and my workbench. I've got the Delta T2 table saw. I think it's a really good option for a table saw under $1,000 and has served me pretty well, but I'm looking forward to upgrading it next year, hopefully. You see it in a lot of workshops because it does make sense for a lot of people, but I think I'm pushing into that point where I would get a little bit more enjoyment and accuracy out of a better table saw. I'm using a dust stopper on a five gallon bucket with an inexpensive shop back for dust collection for this. It doesn't get everything, but overall it does work out pretty well. And this way I don't have any cords or hoses running through my main walkway. Um, you'll see the rest of my dust collection set up in just a minute, but I'm really enjoying having two separate things just to keep any hoses out of the middle of my workshop. My workbench is one of the first things I built in this workshop. In fact, I'll leave a link to the video down in the description. It's got a roughly three inch worktop, hefty vise, and plenty of storage below. It's a great workbench, but when I get a new table saw, I'll likely make a new workbench at the correct outfeed height. The Delta is one of the tallest table saws there are, so if you're upgrading from that to something else, you're likely gonna have to switch your um, outfeed table up a little bit or cut the legs off what you've already got. This one is honestly a bit more overbuilt than what I need it to be. My next one will have more storage and more clamping capabilities. This thick top is really good for doing hand tool woodwork, but it's not as great for some clamping options. And truthfully, it's just bigger than it needs to be. The saw and workbench are normally in this orientation to maximize open space in the front of my workshop, but when having more access to my workbench is more important, I move them around like this. This makes it a lot easier to get on three sides, especially when using things like long clamps where it's helpful to have access all around. Having my workbench in this orientation also puts me pretty much in the middle of my hand tools and portable power tools. I really like these Festool sustainers for drawers and portable toolboxes and cabinets for upper storage. Shelves work too, but let sawdust get on things and don't look as good on video in my opinion. Now, I know a lot of people will say that sawdust is part of having a workshop, and I totally agree with that. If that doesn't bother you at all, sh open shelves are great. For me, what I find is that the sawdust will often cover up anything small you have laying around or labels on things for things like boxes of screws and stuff, and it just creates more problems than it needs to. Without showing you what's in every drawer, I'm mostly on the Makita battery platform. I'm happy with every piece of kit that I have from them, but they do have a poor reputation for nail guns, which leads me to a money saving tip for you. If you want to get a tool from a different battery platform, look for an adapter. I've got this Ryobi nail gun with an adapter for a Makita battery and it works pretty good. The advantage is the Ryobi nail gun was way cheaper than most others on the market and when you buy a tool only because you don't need a new battery and charger, you save even more money. Other than that, I've got a DeWalt biscuit joiner, Bosch corded circular saw, Festool ETS 125, and Festool OF 1400. If any of these broke today, I'd probably buy the same thing tomorrow. I'm that happy with them. The only thing that I wouldn't is this Black & Decker jigsaw. In fact, I kind of hope it breaks so I can justify buying a better one. As for the measuring and marking category, all of my tools are pretty basic. And another money-saving tip that I heard from Jonathan Katz Moses, you can go to the seconds page on Taylor Toolworks and get some really quality tools at a discount with minor blemishes. This combination square has this little patch on it which brought the price down a bit and I use this thing all the time. But that being said, I don't really have any plans to upgrade much outside of maybe a big metal square to replace this plastic one. I find myself using it a lot for things like tool setup and checking that my track saw is square. 
Um, but other than that, I like a lot of these less expensive, smaller marking tools. I find that that's what I normally use on a day-to-day -day basis. I was interested in hand tool woodworking for a little while before finding out how much longer it takes to build everything, and I just don't have the patience for that. And if you're trying to do this to make any sort of profit, it probably doesn't make sense to do most things by hand. But I had already started a nice little collection of purchased and hand-me-down tools. I think something I might do this winter is reevaluate what I actually use or want to keep and downsize on a lot of other stuff. I don't know that I'm really qualified to recommend hand tools to buy or not to buy, but I can tell you what I use the most. As a mostly power tool woodworker, I use a block plane and number four plane occasionally, a set of nice chisels and a set of beater chisels, and a small assortment of hand saws. I really like the Japanese pull saw style. I've had these all for a couple years now, and granted, I'm not doing a bunch of dovetails or a ton of hand cut joinery in general, but they've lasted me pretty well and I have no intentions to upgrade any of these. Lastly for this section are my different joinery methods. I've got a pocket hole system like most people. Something I like to do is actually clamp mine down to the bench and then it's really stable even when dealing with long panels. One other thing that I want to mention here is um, how much I've enjoyed working with the micro jig system. I think for 95% of cases they're better than T-Track for a lot of things and I'm really happy with mine. In fact, I've got some ideas to make some aftermarket accessories for it and plan on putting out a few projects and ideas that hopefully you guys can utilize in your shop too. Moving right along past where most of these tools are stored is my miter saw station. The station itself is effectively just a shelf for my miter saw to sit on where it utilizes part of the corner workbench as a left extension wing. I've got a pretty standard DeWalt 12 inch miter saw that I have absolutely no complaints about. I know that there's a lot of talk with a bunch of different kinds of sliding miter saws on YouTube. I've personally used this one for the last 10 to 15 years in rough construction, finished carpentry, and then some furniture stuff in my own shop. And other than the fact that it's a little bit annoying sometimes when you do need to cut something bigger, I think that it is fully sufficient in every way 99% of the time, and it's way less expensive than some of these sliding miter saws out there. The upper portion includes a dust hood that I still need to hook up to dust collection, a centrally located landing spot for some of my most used tools, and trays for some common hardware. Below it is my DeWalt planer with the helical head on it. To use it, I roll it out, put it on the rolling tool chest, and hook up dust collection, which leads me to a workshop layout tip. I've got this main walkway here that I can relatively easily pull tools into. I can take advantage of the same infeed and outfeed space rather than having unique infeed and outfeed space per tool. Don't get me wrong, this isn't ideal if you do have the room for it because you do need to do a little bit of uh, dancing with your tools halfway through a project, but I think that it's way more effective if you're trying to fit more tools into a smaller space and still be able to use them functionally. And then the next thing moving down this wall after the tool chest is my drum sander. It's a 1632 Supermax and I keep an 80 grip belt on it and use it more for dimensioning and rough sanding. Whereas other people might use 100 or 120 grit in it for finer sanding. This is one of those tools that I wish I would have bought sooner. I absolutely love this thing. It is a little pricey, but it makes a boring and irritating job a breeze. The only thing I don't love about it is all of the space in the base. With the space being a limiting factor for me in my workshop, it just kills me to see this, even though it's such a small amount. I'll probably end up putting a shelf there or storing another tool on it. And lastly in the corner, I've got my new dust collector. It's a Grizzly 1.5 horsepower 1250 CFM dust collector with a 1 micron canister and this little canister cleaning mechanism, which works really well. I thought these bags would be a pain to put on because they are on my old one, but they're pretty tight on the rim so that you can put it there and leave it while you get the metal clamp onto it. A project I have coming up is going to be running hard piping from the dust collector to the miter saw in the hood and then having a couple connection ports along the way for flexible 4 inch hose for my other power tools. I'd ideally like to be able to have two things hooked up at one time even if it's not super functional to use them both in the orientation that they're sitting, as mentioned with my uh, like one specific spot where I have in-feed and out-feed for both. But it's nice to be able to just roll them out without having to plug or connect anything in. Now the other major part of my dust collection system is this WEN air filter I've got on the ceiling. It's pretty inexpensive, all things considered, and does a good job. I like the timer feature on it because I've forgotten to turn it off before and come back into the shop a day or two later with it still running. Moving back to the wall, this whole thing was originally covered in French cleats, but as my shop evolved, I kept cutting it back to what remains now. 
I'll probably center the rest of the space between the miter saw station and the dust collector with French cleats in the near future and be a little bit more intentional with what I put on it. With that being said, one of the most useful things I have on there now is French cleat storage for a lot of my clamps. I've got some Irwin clamps, Harbor Freight F-style clamps, pipe clamps, longer F-style clamps, and parallel clamps. Out of all of them, I think I like the various F-style clamps the most for joinery and pipe clamps the most for smaller things like cutting boards. I've also got some wooden clamps that work well for holding pieces on edge and a few other kinds for various situations. My plan is to eventually build a better storage system for them all on this wall on the other side of my shop. Below where that's going to go is the ugly part of my shop. It's where table saw sleds, scrap wood, and random long things have gathered. If you've got some tips on how to better store these things, leave a comment below. I think this is gonna be one of my very near uh, shop organization projects. Further down is a lumber storage rack. If you've got the vertical space, these prefabricated racks are pretty cost effective, all things considered, and do a good job. If you want to take advantage of horizontal space, like I did on the other side of my workshop, black pipe and 2x4s works pretty well too. I've got linear lumber on these racks and then sheet goods down below. Something that I accidentally did well was put the bottom of this rack a little higher than 48 inches so that I can lay full sheets of plywood on its side underneath. It's also where I store my MFT table when I'm not using it, extra sawhorses, and a sacrificial board that I'll use when I think that I'm gonna cut through a piece or when I'm using a router and it might dip off the edge. Um, this is kind of a catch-all right now and hopefully something that'll be a little bit more organized in 2023. And lastly in the corner, I've got my 14 inch Grizzly bandsaw. It's the pretty standard model you see a lot, but truthfully, I wouldn't recommend it. You can get similar specs on a benchtop model that's a little bit less expensive, or you can go up a notch and increase the motor and the depth of cut to be better for resawing. As it stands right now, I can only resaw things that are roughly around six inches, and it says you can use a three quarter inch blade on it, but I've never been able to get one to track well, so I'm capped out at around a five eighths inch thick blade. Like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, my table saw is probably the first thing that I wanna upgrade in 2023, but next on that list is probably this bandsaw. Overall, I'm definitely limited by space, but have really been enjoying my workshop as it is. If you've been around on the channel for a while, you know that my last shop tour was in my basement workshop. Before that, I never really had a full one, so just grateful for this space to begin with. If you're limited on space, time, or money when doing this as a hobby or even transitioning into a business, I would encourage you to subscribe and stick around for more videos. Um, I I've got a lot of ideas that I want to put into videos in terms of shop layout, organization. With that, I hope you enjoyed this shop tour, got some ideas for your own shop, and if you've got any ideas for mine that you think would work well, especially if you know anything about recording, uh, would love to hear it and look forward to seeing you guys on the next one. With that, have fun building.